My name is Martin. Welcome to the second episode of Weasel's Tool Corner. In this episode I want to show you uh, some neat tricks and some features of calipers that you can use also in a woodworking shop, not even in a machinist shop or a metalworker shop. Um, some of my experience and uh, some of the features that are uh, not so common on a caliper and for what you can use them elsewhere. So now let me rearrange my cameras a bit to bring you a bit nearer to the thing and I'll show you some of these features. So this is my caliper that I use in my shop here. Uh, this is a pretty much standard 15 cm or 150 mm and 6 inch uh, caliper. You can get them in different lengths from about 7.5 cm, 75 mm uh, up to uh, I guess 2 meters or so are the biggest ones. Uh, also you can get them in different uh, material grades. You can get uh, some made out of plastic for if you don't have to do so accurate measurements and uh, be more worried about uh, the material you, you measure. So if you have pretty much rather soft material, uh, you should use plastic ones to not damage the surface. Uh, this one here is about a middle, middle tier, middle grade uh, caliper. It's made out of stainless steel and uh, the tips are hardened or I guess everything's hardened to a bit and you can get the high-end ones which are made out of uh, pretty good steel and um, the scales are better made with more accuracy and uh, better hardened so they last longer if you need them and uh, rather more uh, accurate than the standard ones. Uh, also it's a thing of the price as usual so this this one here costs about 20-30 bucks or so, so the standard ones. Uh, but you can get, if you need them, more accurate ones and better manufactured ones. Uh, that goes up to 100-200 bucks for this for this size. Uh, also available are different scale um, options in. This one here is a vernier caliper, so you have your standard scale here and you have this uh, vernier scale here which you can use to measure the uh, decimal points. So uh, in this case you can measure to accuracy of about 0.05 millimeters or 120th inch. Um, it's uh, it's a bit tricky to read out, so if you want to measure a decimal point, for example, if I set it to here, so this is 15.5 millimeters. So you have your fifth zero on the 15 and a little bit more, and the line of the 0.5 millimeter uh, lines up with the with another millimeter point so you add this to your main measurement and you get your 15.5 millimeters all the other ones are of some kind of a uh, of the millimeter scale so you always use the one which you have uh, which which aligns exactly with a with a line uh, also available uh, calipers with a dial so you have your dial here which um, makes the same as this vernier scale here so you uh, read out your full millimeters from this scale and every millimeter or so the dial turns one turn so you me measure a more accurate to 0 0.01 millimeter or so and it's way easier to read out because you just have to add this to your main measurement. Uh, and you can also get digital ones which have some kind of 
magnetic uh, field inlay into the caliper body and the slider have a digital readout, so LCD display, which also comes in different accuracy grades from uh, also 0.01 millimeters accuracy uh, up to three digits after the after the zero. So whatever you want, whatever you need for to get your job done, you can use them to whatever you need them. Uh, also, a question of price, of course. Now, uh, let me show you some of the measurements you can get with a caliper and for what you can need them also in a woodworking shop. So, now the most obvious thing to measure with a caliper is of course the outer diameter or the outer, uh, the outer size, the outer width of some kind of thing. In this case, a little bit, no problems whatsoever. So, here you can see you have your zero uh, past the 5mm marking and your 0.5 marking aligns exactly with the straight line. So this is a 5.5mm drill bit and you can read this exactly with the caliper. Of course you can measure bigger drill bits or smaller drill bits, whatever you want, whatever you need. This in this case, this Forstner drill bit is a bit smaller than it should be, but uh, could also be my caliper. Had better days, I presume, this thing. Of course, you can measure tubing with this. And here comes the next thing. Uh, instead of the outer jaws here, you can use the inner jaws. And you can measure the inner diameter of, a, uh, of some kind of thing. So, uh, next thing what you can do, while we have this, uh, this tubing here in hand, you can measure the wall thickness of a tube. Uh, you should notice then if you measure some kind of inner diameter on an inner radius, you should use this uh, grounded part of the, uh, of the color patrols. Otherwise, if you take it so or something, you would couldn't get at, uh, you could get errors uh, from the inner diameter. So always use the grounded piece of this caliper. So that's more the standard features. A few uh, features that you haven't seen that often uh, are this depth probe here. So you can measure, for example, the depth of a a drilled hole or something, or of a fold, or whatever you want. Uh, that's a really neat feature. So this always aligns with the zero here, and if you stick it into a hole, you can measure the depth of this hole. Um, what you also can do, besides measure things, you can mark things with this. So for example, if I set it here to 20, cent, uh, 20 millimeters uh, and you align it with the edge of some kind of uh, part and you scratch it along here, you get exactly a line on this 20 millimeters. I guess it's hard to see on the camera, but it's here, believe me. So you can mark parallel lines to an edge and other than that, you can use this shoulder and align it to the edge and mark it with some kind of pencil here. So these two shoulders also reset to zero and if you set it to some kind of measurement, for example 30 millimeters or so, you have here exactly 30 millimeters. So you can use it to mark exactly 30 millimeters parallel to your workpiece edge. That's some really neat features. Oh, what I forgot to mention, uh, while I have this, this release here, uh, you, can, uh, you can get 
different kinds of stopper mechanisms on this. So this is a standard one with this uh, preloaded, spring-loaded uh, button here to unlock the slider. Uh, also you can get some with a screw here on the top, so you set it to your position and fasten the screw and it will stay on this position. And there's another uh, way to do this. Some have here a thumb wheel. So you turn this wheel and while you're turning this wheel the slider moves. So if you turn it that way, the slider moves in. If you turn it that way, the slider moves out. That's my favorite uh, kind of caliper. Uh, so my next one, if I buy one, will be one with this wheel. Maybe a digital one, we'll see. Uh, as mentioned, I don't use it for that precision things, so I don't need to buy a new one. This fits my purposes very well. Um, but if you use them more often, or use it for more accurate stuff, then I really recommend don't uh, don't get a cheap one. Get the best you can get for a price that's okay for you. The better your measurements and the better your markings, the better is the uh, result you can get out of your work. Other time, uh, otherwise, it's a waste of time if you uh, have bad measurements or have bad uh, bad markings. All the steps you can you accomplish after this these markings uh, are off by this kind of measurement. So don't uh, waste money or waste time on uh, bad measurements. It's better to have good measure tools and use them properly. Yes, so that's it. Um, leave me some comments. How do you like this? How do you use your calipers? And if I forgot some uses that you can make also. Um, leave me some comments. How do you like this video? Give it a thumbs up if you do like it. and. Have a nice day. Bye.